Hello! In today's tutorial, we are going to meet a couple of somewhat more complex MIDI commands than the ones we have dealt with until now. They are used to control two of the most common sound effects, reverb and chorus. If you accidentally stumbled upon this video and would like to see my earlier tutorials on MIDI programming, you can find them on my YouTube channel. Ok, first I need to talk about the way reverb and chorus effects are implemented in a typical MIDI-enabled musical instrument. There will be an effects module where the type of the effect and the effects parameters are configured. This configuration is independent of any MIDI channel or sound. Controllers which adjust the effects parameters are referred to as global controls. For an effect to actually being heard, it has to be placed into the sound generation path. This is achieved by the channel controls. They can be thought of as taps on the effect module. When the tap is open, the effect finds its way to the sound and modifies it. The extent of the modification depends on how wide the tap is open. Now let's see what the MIDI specification says about the MIDI messages we can use to configure the global parameters of the reverb and chorus effects. The entire message is fairly long, but the interesting bits are the parameter to be controlled and the value of the parameter. The reverb has two parameters, the reverb type and the reverb time. This letter adjusts the length of the echo-like perception. The chorus message is similar, but uh, there are more parameters to tinker with. In possession of this information, we can now start writing code to send these messages to the MIDI device. This is going to be different than sending CZ messages. What the API we are using wants us to do is to set aside a memory buffer in unmanaged memory space and place the values of the parameters in there. It also wants us to create a header with the details of that memory space, including a pointer to the memory location. To send the message, we call the MIDI out long message function and pass in the header as one of the arguments. The good thing is that this memory space can be reserved at the beginning of the program's execution and freed up just before the program terminates. We don't have to allocate and reallocate memory every time a message is sent. The reserved memory space can be reused. The same holds true for the header. I allocate memory in the MIDI out device class after the device has been opened. I also create the header here. MIDI out prepare header is an API method we haven't seen before. Here is its declaration. The memory is freed and the header is destroyed in the close function of the MIDI out device. Now I show you the memory buffer itself. It is a byte array with 13 bytes. Memory space for the buffer is allocated on this line and then the values are copied into it. When we are using this buffer, we will modify the values at indexes 10 and 11. The header is created here. This will not be modified, it will stay the same. The mechanics of this memory allocation is beyond the scope of this tutorial. 
If this looks rather cryptic, then look up these keywords on the internet. For completeness, I show you the declaration of the header. and the declaration of the buffer byte array. I called it sysx13 buffer. In the future, I will create similar memory buffers with different sizes for other tasks. So far, so good. But how and when a message is actually sent? Now we need to turn our attention to the user interface. On the main window, I added a tab control with two tabs, one for reverb and the other for chorus. These here are vertical sliders, except they look rather squashed. The drop-down list box is for the chorus types. In the code behind, we have the event handlers. Ignore this controls locked test, I'll talk about it later. From this statement here, you can tell that I have a reverb object and I'm calling the setType function on that object. We will look at the reverb object in a minute. Interestingly, I found that when I change the reverb type, I also have to nudge the reverb time a little bit for the type setting to take effect. I tested this program on a Roland digital piano. Other instruments might not have this problem. These event handlers execute functions on the chorus class we will look at shortly. But before I do that, I want to highlight an issue which creates a challenge. You know, the thing is, when the parameter's value is changed, the update has to happen at two places on the MIDI device and on the user interface. The control slider or list box is indirectly linked to the device, so when an event is fired on the user interface, then, as the result of a chain of function calls, the parameter value on the device gets changed. However, there are occasions when the parameter's value has to be updated from code and the user interface control is synchronized in a subsequent step. But when such a synchronization happens, the event handler fires, and this results in another update on the device. This controls locked flag is used to prevent that from happening. I don't know if I explained this well enough. I assume you would have come across this scenario too, so you would probably know what I mean. Ok, so the reverb and chorus classes. They sit between the user interface and the MIDI device. Their properties are the parameters of the reverb and chorus effects. They have useful methods like initialization and the method that sends the message to the device. The sendGlobal parameter message function is a does it all function. Its parameters determine what kind of message is being sent. The first argument tells whether it is a reverb or chorus message, the second defines the parameter, and the third is the parameter's value. These here are enumerations. Now, to look at the definition of the sendGlobal parameter message method, here you can see that we are changing the bytes in the memory buffer and then calling the MIDI out long message function in the API. I think we've come full circle, so let's run the program.
I won't play the piano at this stage because we are not finished yet. If you remember, at the beginning I talked about global controllers and channel level controls. So far we've only done the global controllers. The other half of the story is still to be told. You might want to take a break now, grab a couple of coffee or whatever your favorite beverage is and continue a little later. Ok, back to work. Let's press on with this project. We've done the global controllers and they determine the kind of effect we could apply to the sound on any channel. However, so far this is just a possibility. To actually apply the effect to the sound, we need to add reverb and chorus level controls to each channel. This is an extract from a MIDI implementation document. It describes the MIDI messages for the reverb send level and the chorus send level. These are common controller messages, so in the program they belong to the list of CC messages in the MIDI CC message class. Thankfully, we don't need to do anything else here, because the functions that do the work have already been written. I think we wrote them in Tutorial 7. We still have to do the user interface though. I have two new fields on the channel user control. They are labels, so they cannot be edited. I didn't want to use input fields and compel the user to type in a number. That would be too cumbersome. I opted for slider controls instead. You can't see them now because they are hidden. Their value property is bound to the text on the label controls. I declared a couple of event handlers. One of them fires when the value of the slider changes. This will be used to send messages to the MIDI device to change the reverb and chorus send level. I am using the mouse right button down event to show or hide the slider control. This is the code for the event handlers. They are very similar to the event handlers we wrote before, for instance the volume control. All I needed to do is to make copies and just change the names of the objects the events belong to. Here the right mouse button toggles the visibility of the slider. I've got a feeling that that's all. We are done. To finish off this rather long video, I run the program. Sit back and enjoy the demonstration.